My coverage of Computex 2023 is brought to you by G-Skill, Thermaltake, Cooler Master, and Gigabyte. It's the last day somehow. I'm here in my hotel room, my bags are packed up, and suddenly Computex is over. And I'm thinking, what the heck just happened? This week went by in a blur. It was amazing, it was fantastic. It was great in so many ways to see so many people. And if there was a theme for this Computex, I think that's what it was, and that's what people kept coming back and talking about. There were no major, major announcements from the likes of Intel, AMD, maybe Nvidia if you're really into AI. And yet somehow this show still felt really special. And of course a big part of that is because no one has been able to come out here for Computex really for the past four years, five years for me. I was also noting as the week went by, this is actually my 10 year anniversary coming to Computex. I haven't been here every year, but my first year was all the way back in 2013. But sticking with that theme of people and tech friends coming together and seeing each other after so long, I did have a chance earlier this week to sit down with Steve and Kyle and ask them a few questions. Okay, we'll do it live. All right. <clears throat> Hey guys, I have a chance to sit down with a few good friends of mine, which is one of the great things about coming to Computex and, and uh, being here in Taiwan. We got Steve, we got Kyle, and we were just having a little discussion about the RTX 4060 Ti launch, mainly I guess a little bit on the 7600, the RX 7600 launches last week, because there was instances like Jay's video that he had to pull down, which was largely due to fan sentiment, I would say. So I have a question, I'm gonna, we'll, we'll talk to Steve and then to Kyle. Steve, why are the fans wrong? No. Why are the fans wrong? <laughs> uh, I'll just say what I was saying <laughs> behind the scenes, but unfiltered. I, yes. I think Jay reacted. I think Jay's handling of it was very good in that he protected his team and he took some responsibility. But I also think that reviewers should not be writing reviews to try to accommodate uh, how the room feels. It's not our job to read the room necessarily, or in an ideal world, it shouldn't be. It should just be based on our own data or opinions. But unfortunately, that's the way it works with some of these more hot topic cards. I guess my message to viewers would be, there's a distinction to be made between an error or a, a, a review that is factually inaccurate and an opinion you don't like. Mm -hmm. And even though for this one, we were on like the right side of the opinion, uh, we're not always going to be. Just like in this case, Jay didn't think he was. If it is a well-meaning video with an opinion you, you don't like, that shouldn't necessitate, like, it shouldn't warrant attacks on the, the creator. You just go, okay, well, I disagree, and then you move on. I agree, well said, Steve. And it's, it's hard as a YouTube content creator to kind of find that balance between, especially when you're doing benchmarking review-based testing, uh, sort of balancing that with the audience opinion of things. Mm -hmm. So with that, I got a question for Kyle over here. Kyle? Yes. How can we solve the problem of hatred and pain in the world? Oh, shit. <laughs> well, Paul, ketamine's been very helpful for me. Um, yeah, I think, uh, six to eight milligram doses twice a the day, weekly. Uh, no, um, It's all about that special K. No, uh, I, I like to echo a lot of pretty much everything what Steve said. You know, I think um, what makes the, the tech space so great is that we have differing opinions. It would be really lame if we all had the same exact thoughts on every single launch. And it's hard when you're a reviewer because there's a herd mentality sometimes. And when, when the community, when the viewers have a sentiment towards a product, you kind of feel like you need to blend in with that, be a chameleon and kind of mimic what all the other reviewers are saying. But what, like, then what's the point if you only have to follow one person to hear everyone's Opinion. It's just a copy um, paste. You gotta, you, you, you gotta cut the, cut out the, uh, the copy pasta. And um, you know, if you have a genuine opinion about something, even if it's an unpopular opinion, you gotta stick to your guns because that's what makes what we do, what all these guys do, so great. So. I think it helps to try and read the room only for the purpose of figuring out how will your opinion be received. Mm. But you want to avoid trying to shape your opinion to the room. So yeah. like, normally you can get a feel for it on like Reddit or something before a launch. It's like, okay, how does everyone, what does everyone think of this product that they do not have, have not used, and know nothing about? Okay, now that I know their opinion, right. <laughs> uh, I can write my phrasing of mine to at least accommodate that viewpoint and say, right. so I know you all are gonna think I'm wrong, exactly. but here's why actually you are wrong. That's right. <laughs> and as reviewers, it's important to be able to tell people when they're wrong. That's. I, I want to. So one of the things I want to add to this is I really, really like the tech community 
uh, like the like YouTubers and, and written media and everything, I do feel like there is a sense of solidarity amongst the community going all the way back to when I first started doing this like 2008 and 2009 and my first interactions with Linus, they were always very positive, always very supportive. And so that's, I think, what I want to end this little bit on is... Linus is a dick now. Linus is a, obviously a dick now. We, an but for these guys here, for all the, uh, the members of the tech community who are always supportive and everything, um, like that's, that's been one of the things that sustained me, especially going through times where it's like a little bit more dramatic or there's fan backlash or that sort of thing. But anyway, Steve, Kyle, thanks for being part of my video. Enjoy the rest of your time in Taipei. The bulk of Computex, at least for the uh, hardware vendors that we cover, takes place at the main convention center. And that place is both massive and also just incredibly chaotic with all of the booths just blasting music and having big LED panels shining lights everywhere. There is still an unfortunate proliferation of booth babes, but I've tried to avoid those wherever possible because I find it a little distasteful. But a really cool thing I was able to do this week was hang out a lot with Kyle. And I know we're local, we both live in Southern California, but he also came to Computex with me the first time 10 years ago. And it was really awesome just wandering the show floor with him, checking out the random sites, and also lots of random encounters, whether it was people who had watched our channels who came up to say that they liked the stuff we did, which is always awesome, I really appreciate that. Many old friends, PR reps, marketing reps from different companies that we've worked with, and also just like the randomness of Computex that you can't really get anywhere else. Like after we were finishing up at the Noctua booth, two gentlemen approached me, Nicholas and Alan, and they had a new product. They worked for a company Company called Link Plus. Basically, they have built an all-in-one liquid cooler for GPUs. And yes, we've seen that done before, but they wanted to make this one a little bit more universal and also a bit more flexible. So the entire unit, they say, costs just as much as an air cooler. And obviously a lot of marketing reps will make a lot of claims at Computex. They can't always be validated, but if we're taking their word for it and this does cost just as much as an air cooler, it also seems like they built in a lot of flexibility with quick disconnects for the tubing so you could potentially expand that loop in the future. The pump is actually housed in the radiator. And even though it was just a couple random guys who came up and pulled a product out of a backpack to show to us, I said, that actually looks pretty cool. So let me share it with people, see if you can get a little bit of uptake on that. So Link Plus is a company and they are trying to gain some traction with some of the manufacturers who manufacture graphics cards to see if their cooling solution can be integrated in that. So who knows, we might see it in the future. But veering back away from the direct coverage of Computex, another thing I love about Taipei is just the food. Pretty much anywhere you might go to get food, whatever random spot you choose is almost always going to be amazing. I've eaten everything this week from traditional Xiaolong Bao like Din Tai Fung, dumplings, noodles, beef noodles. We even found a random falafel place one night and it was amazing as well. Even the McDonald's here, which I know, like you come all the way to Taiwan and you eat McDonald's, but somehow the McDonald's here is slightly better. I like to get their breakfast at least once because it just seems like higher quality than back in the US, like the English muffin is actually soft. And even McDonald's here has some crazy stuff that you can't get back in the US. Like they had this special burger that has a squid ink bun that's black and had some kind of like hollandaise sauce in there. And then there's like this breaded cheese pack that's kind of like a square mozzarella stick or something and it mostly tasted like a Big Mac, but it was actually pretty good. But that said, here's a quick look at some of the other random food experiences we had, as well as some excellent meals that we ate with lots of the tech friends we were able to hang out with. I know. You're a YouTuber, it's like, we're done being on camera. Okay. <laughs> Malt milk. I just want to, Luke, is malt milk good? It's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's what you said earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, Steve. Does, does Luke like malt milk enough? He loves it. <laughs> This is the PG-13 take, I, I, I imagine. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. yep. This might not make the final video. <laughs> Late night in 
Taipei. Well, we just chill outside. Taipei 101. You know, there it is. I'm watching this crane. Lifting this dude. Way up there. To do something. We don't know what. Steve, Steve can you give us a brief explanation of what's, what we're looking at here? Uh, I wish I could. Okay. I, 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 I guess it's a light bulb change directly over our heads while we're just eating tiny apples. Looks like a roll of parchment or something. He's putting up an ad on the side of the building. Oh, it's an ad. Oh, they're doing the ad. We got people here. Hi, okay, sorry, documenting, you know, making YouTube videos. It's all good. What's a word chicken? Which one? I said, what's a word chicken? That's word chicken. So, we're not being anti-social. We're actually using Google Translate to understand what we're trying to avoid eating. Yeah. Salt Nazism. Yeah. Bacon. What? <laughs> yeah. Nazism. Yeah. Yeah. Fire grilled miso fish. All right. Would have been great. Weird, what? Is this like a meal or is this a dessert? This is one person. One person can have that, or sometimes people just share it. This is huge. Yeah. As I enjoy this mango shave ice, I have a question for Greg. Oh god. Hi. Why didn't you get any? Because I'm not the biggest fan of it. Like I, tr I don't trust you as much now because yeah. of that. Yeah. Neither does my wife. It doesn't really work out. <laughs> <well>. <laughs> All right. Well, she's a smart lady. Lisa's a smart lady. It's just shave ice though, and um, that it's actually one of the most delicious things. So you regret now? Oh, oh, well, there's a little bit of regret. The face of regret right there, that's yeah. Greg. Yours looks better than all of them. So as part of this final video with some random stuff that we do in Taiwan, I thought I'd take you to the supermarket that we go to sometimes. This is actually located at Taipei 101. So I don't know if this is a typical supermarket in terms of what you can uh, get elsewhere in Taiwan, but we love coming here because there's a bunch of stuff that you can just grab and it's easy. And Joe has eaten quite a few meals here as well. So there's a lot of stuff about this supermarket that is very similar to the supermarkets that we have in the US, and there's some stuff that is distinctly different. Joe recommends the Doriyaki. Uh, I don't know if that's the, <laughs> is this the brand? I don't know, it's literally two little mini pancakes and they use that as sandwich bread in the middle, you have some kind of good, yummy goodness. But look, Joe, this is actually from Japan. So what, it's so good. It's, it's in Taiwan, so it's closer it's to true. the source. It's true. Lots of fresh stuff, produce and everything. Uh, there's a little sushi area over here, so you can just pick up some sushi, grab and go and eat it. And this looks like some pretty stinking good sushi for grocery store sushi, for sure. You got fish without scales, you got fish with scales and heads on, you got just the head of the fish if you want to get that. Look, high quality meats. I always love some high quality meats. Like, look at those. Those look awesome. Look at the lovely produce. Onions, potatoes. I, I thought this was interesting. Look at these carrots. These are carrots like straight out of a cartoon or something like that. First, they're, they're so big and fat, they look really delicious, but how do they make all the carrots so uniform in size and shape? I don't know. It's a carrot mystery. We've gotten pretty spoiled in the U.S. because these little bakery shops, kind of like this one, have been popping up more and more often. We actually had lunch here uh, just a little bit earlier today because they have these like breads that have like a hot dog in the middle, or I had a the one that had ham and cheese. Has anyone ever had an Oreo bagel before? I haven't, but I kind of want one. And look, condensed milk bread. Oh, that's so good. We have noodles of all variety. You got your Italian noodles here, your standard pasta noodles. You got all manner of like instant noodles. Is there one row of it? I mean, there's at least one row of instant noodles, but you've also got these special ones with, that have collector cases, I guess. You get your instant noodle and a collector box and even more noodles here. As a person who loves noodles, I highly approve of the noodle selection. And of course, there's an absolutely stellar wide variety of alcohol here, whether you want like sake or like canned beer, they got all that over here. They have an entire wine oh. cellar area over there Show this. Uh, with, with lots and lots of wine. Hey little kid, what's up, beer? Just give him this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've just spotted this earlier. Look at these. 
All right, for kid size. Kid size asahi. <laughs> Child. <laughs> 135 milliliters, which is uh, a hey, goal. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah. The thing with these is that you can people would be like, "Wow, how many drinks have you had?" And be like, "I've had 14 cans of beer. I've had 30 cans of beer. I barely feel it." And look, they're only about a buck each. And something they might not have at your grocery store back home. This little kitty robot wanders around selling your fruit and stuff. What do you got for solo, Catbot? You're so cute. You're so cute. Give a little pet on the head. Thank you. Oh, he liked it like that. You see, it smiled when I pet it. So there's a quick impromptu tour of the supermarket here at Taipei 101. Let me know if there's anything you saw here that you have back home or anything that you really wish you did have in your grocery store. So the food, of course, a major highlight no matter if you get it from the grocery store or if you go to a little hole in the wall restaurant. But kind of hand in hand with the food is the ability to sit down and actually have some lengthier conversations with people who you know you're friends with, but the amount of time you get to sit down face to face is very limited throughout the year. And I don't know about you guys, but like, I'm not one for like phone calls, conversations. I'm not even very good at communicating via like text or direct message. I really like the opportunity to sit down face to face, catch up with people, and even just talk about the most random stuff that we might want to talk about. So that was one of the big successes of this week is that I actually did have lots and lots of time to spend with the tech friends. For example, Luke from Linus Media Group, very old friend of mine. I love hanging out with the guy and we got to have dinner three separate times on this trip, which was awesome. Also for the last two meals, Linus paid for them. So thanks Linus, it was yummy. But my time is running out. I need to get to the airport. So I wanna say a final thank you to my sponsors, of course, for this event, Gigabyte G-Skill Thermaltake and Cooler Master. They help provide the funds so that I can come here and bring you guys all this coverage. I also wanna say thank you just in general to Taipei and all the people I've encountered here. Everyone has been so friendly, so amazing. It's one of my favorite places to visit. A huge thank you again to all the tech friends who we've been able to hang out with, uh, Gamers Nexus, Hardware Unbox Guys, Hardware Canucks, uh, Linus, Luke, uh, Dennis, uh, the whole team over at LMG. I will be seeing a lot of these folks again at LTX, so I'm really excited about that in just a couple months later in the summer. A huge thank you to all of you guys for watching my videos, the comments, the feedback. It really helps sustain us throughout the week because we get so much immediate response that it helps us to continue out throughout the week making the videos, gives us some tips. I know Joe got some excellent tips about like where to go around here to find a market where he could buy a bunch of stuff for breakfast. And on that topic, a huge thank you to Joe as well, my editor who has been editing away all week, much of the time spent in his hotel room, but he's been able to get out and about a little bit too. Joe, it has been a great trip. I look forward to doing this again soon. I look forward to bringing you guys a lot more content again soon. I again have a little bit of a weird schedule just for the next couple weeks. I'll be coming back with tech news again on June 18th. I have a bunch of construction projects I'm going to be doing on my house, so I'm going to be doing some videos on that just to update you guys on the progress. But that is all for my coverage of Computex 2023. Thank you guys once again so much for watching. Of course, if you want to hit the thumbs up button, that would be great. There's a playlist of all the videos if you missed them. We'll see you guys in the next video.